you don't need to, this video will cover everything. So you'll run into string manipulation a lot. And we've already learned what a string is. Something that looks like this. This is an empty string. Okay, An empty string is just a string that contains no characters, zero characters. So we're going to s out uh, test.length, which it, as you may guess is the length of the string. We're also going to do uh, sys out print line on test dot is empty. What in the world? I don't know why it did that. Test is empty. What is it doing? I don't know why it's doing that. Something on my autocomplete or something. It shouldn't do that for you. So this one's going to print out zero and this one should print out true. Look over here. When it actually runs. Here we go, zero and true, which means that this string has a length of zero. There are zero characters in it. And uh, is empty returns true basically if there are zero characters in it. Otherwise, it returns false. Now, this is much different than if you do this. You can have a null string because a string is an object, and objects can be null. Primitives cannot be null, by the way. I don't remember if I've said that in a previous video. Primitives cannot be null. Only objects can be null because they are references, they are memory addresses. So we'll run this and we'll get a null pointer exception because I'm trying to access a method on an object that doesn't exist. Okay? So null string and empty string are very different. Now often you'll have to parse some string that you get from somewhere. I know this is kind of vague, but strings are used to format information almost universally in computer science. We can represent basically anything as a string. For example, if you've ever done a web search on pretty much any site, you may have seen something like, uh, you know, it's like search dot, you know, uh, dot HTML slash Q equals, and then you'll see a bunch of stuff like da da da, comma, you know, and you'll see a bunch of stuff on the end of it that you may not know what it is, but what it actually is is a query. So they might do, uh, you know, Q equals, um, let me not do Q equals, let me do like a name equals Roger. Usually they use an ampersand to uh, combine different things in a URL, but it can be really anything. And um, so name and you know uh, age equals 32 and um, what's something else that a person might have uh, name age and uh, let's see I'm trying to think of some maybe how about vehicle or nah, that's dumb uh, SSN equals one two three four five six seven eight nine so you might have to parse this string. Now there are multiple ways to go through a string. Strings have a lot of functions and to see them all you can either do something like this, just type the name of your string dot and let this thing show up. This will show you all of the functions you can call on a string. Uh, I don't even know what half of these do because most of them aren't really useful to, to us. They're maybe used by Java internally. But here are some interesting ones. Care at, we've learned that strings are made up of different characters. so. I'll put a little comment here. And we've learned that strings are basically arrays of characters. So this is index 0. So if we do test care at 0, we'll get the letter N. Because N is at the 0th position. A is at the first position. M is at the second position, etc. So if we wanted to get this ampersand, if we knew this string in advance, th that would be 10. Index 10 should be an AND. We're going to just copy this guy and put them in here uh, with an extra one of these. So this should be an ampersand if I've counted correctly. So it's going to print out an ampersand. That's this thing right here at index 10. Hopefully this is big enough. It looks like it is. So care at lets you get which character is at this index. If you don't want to work with a string and you want to actually get the character array that's inside of it, you can do that. To define your character array and give it a name. Use test dot to care array. So now if I debug it, the n equals zero is just so I have a, a place to stop at. If I debug this, let's actually get rid of this one. 
if I debug this, I will be able to see where my variable's at, down here. This test array, I can see all of them, so at array index 0, this is a little small down here, and I don't think I can change it, but it's n. Index 1 is a, index 2 is m, and so on and so forth, and it goes all the way down to the very end. All right. So you can convert your string to an array of characters with to care array. Now you probably won't be doing that too much. You might every once in a while, but you don't really need to because there are some really awesome string functions uh, methods that you can use. And uh, we talked about caret. We're going to talk about index of. This is one of the ones that I missed last time, I think. So, but it's very important. Okay. What index of does? Uh, that's just the name of the variable. Let's do um, uh, amp1. What index does is it tells you what index a particular character or string is at. Okay, whoops, we're going to do index of. So you can use a string or you can use, what's this? Index of an integer. It returns the index with this string of the first occurrence of the specified character. I don't know why there's an integer going in. This is supposed to be a character right here. But let's say we want to find the first ampersand. We just put it in here. And if we print it, let's get rid of this debug. We're going to print uh, index of amp1. So this should print out, what did I say it was, 10? This should print out 10. And it does. We know it's at the 10th position because we can see the string. But if users are supplying a string, if they're typing something in or if they're doing a web search or something like that, we don't know what this string is going to be. So it's our job to figure out, uh, you know, what's in it. And index of is one of the ways you can do that. You can use index of very effectively, but I'm going to show you how later. Another very powerful way to manipulate a string is to break it up based on a particular pattern or character. And here's how you do that. I can actually turn this string, our test string right here, I can turn this into an array where each element is separated by whatever character I want. In this case I'm going to separate these by ampersand. Okay, so string uh, test array equals test dot split. Now, the parameter that split takes, let me get rid of this line, the parameter that split takes is a string, but it actually represents what's called a regular expression. A regular expression is a way of defining a pattern of characters. So, for example, I can make a regular expression that matches a string that's all digits, all numbers. I can make a regular expression that matches a string that contains the word hello. I can make a regular expression that matches a string that contains the word hello but does not contain the word goodbye. You can make a regular expression for anything except for palindromes, I believe. They're completely language independent, which is great. If you don't know what a regex is, there's this great site called regxr.com. This is a JavaScript based regex engine and it searches as you type. So the regex is up here on the top. This is a regular expression. It looks kind of weird if you don't know what they, you know, if you don't know the syntax. Let me actually zoom into this a little bit, make the text a little bigger, and I'll drag this guy out. But the reason this site is so good, there are a lot of other sites like it, but I've used a bunch of them, and this is the best one for me. If you find one that you like, you can use that, of course. But the reason why this site is so good, I maybe zoomed in a little too much. Let me zoom out a little bit. That's good. Is they have all these things on the left, like they can they have this reference where they tell you, they remind you, oh, what does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? You can click on them, and it gives you an example for all of these. So the entire regex engine, if you will, is defined down here. And you can go to the cheat sheet, which I usually, uh, this is what I usually click on when I'm editing, because it's like a quick reference. They have all the tags on the left and what they mean on the right. So just as an example, so this second line here on the left, the backslash w, backslash d, backslash s, backslash w is a word character, which is basically a letter. Backslash d is a digit, and backslash s is white space. So that would be the space character, the tab character. Uh, in some engines it includes new line, but I don't think it does in this one. So if I wanted to make a regular expression, 
to match uh, a seven digit number for example I would do this and that would match every seven seven digit number that's in here now this is the only one I mean if you shift this to the right like like this it'll it'll get the next group right it, it only finds the first one and then the match stops here but there's only three left the seven eight nine that's not seven digits so that's why it's only matching the first seven and not like every combination this site is great for making and testing regular expressions all you have to do is copy this and paste it into your Java code with one caveat I'll get to that but the regular expression I'm gonna be using is pretty simple watch this ah oh, there we go I'm just gonna split by ampersand in regular expression there are several special characters that's all these backslashes and everything and uh, parentheses for example are special but the ampersand the and symbol is not a special character anything that's not a special character it will match directly so I can match every of the word the just by typing the okay so anything that's not a special character in regex gets matched explicitly or literally I guess so I'm matching just this character the ampersand so what this is gonna do what split is gonna do is it's gonna split this string and it's gonna split at this place this place uh, no just those two so I should get an array of three strings the first string should be name equals Roger the second one will be age equals 32 third one will be SSN equals that number so we're going to uh, we're just going to uh, debug here I don't want to print anything I just want to see what is in my array this implementation might actually keep the ampersands in there oh it doesn't okay it actually takes them out which is good so here it is the first string name equals Roger second one is age equals 32 and the third one is SSN equals one two three four blah, blah, blah. all right so we've got our three strings that we started with this original one we have split it into three pieces using this what's called a delimiter you might have heard comma separated values or comma separated actually no that is what it's called comma separated values a CSV chart that's basically all it's doing you just type some data and you separate each cell by using a comma that's exactly how CSVs and things like that work and this is how websites parse your search if you're searching for someone named Roger who's 32 years old and has this SSN this is probably how it's gonna send the data and on their end they're gonna use something like this to go through to go through the search so they can figure out what you're searching for now we can go a little bit further now that we have split our string into three different pieces we want to know this name equals Roger this name equals Roger is pretty useless we want to know by what are we searching name and what the value is going to be Roger and this is where index of is important so I'll do int uh, equals at like EQ that's the name of my variable equals uh, test array zero obviously you would do this in a loop index of and then we'll put the equal sign right in there so this is going to return where the first occurrence of the equals character right here the first occurrence of the equals character is in this string or if there isn't one it'll return a negative number negative one always in this case so we can uh, like I said obviously you would do this in a loop so let's say I wanted to parse every single string that we got I would do uh, our little for loop in uh, test uh, not test test array alright so we're finding the equal sign if it's not negative one let's make my code look a little nicer if equals is not negative one let me actually stop the debug it's taking up space if equals is not negative one then the uh, var name equals test was it oh no it's s s is what we're iterating on dot and this is the next thing I'm going to teach you about substring okay a substring does exactly what it sounds like you can take just a piece of an existing string out based on various indices so there are two methods for substring in Java and these are different in each in different languages so C and JavaScript might do this differently this is only for Java a lot of languages have substring but the way it works in Java is just for Java 
there are two functions, or two methods. The first method takes two parameters. The first parameter is the starting index of your substring. So our original string in this case, let's say we're iterating on the first one, it's going to be name equals Roger. This is our first string. We know that the equals is at position 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Position 4. So what we're going to end up doing, that's what equals is going to be. This EQ is going to be 4 in this case. The first position or the first index is where to start. So we want to capture this is going to be the variable name. We're going to capture oops, we're down here. We're going to capture this, the word name. So we're going to start at 0 and we're going to end right before the equals. Now in Java, this second parameter is one index before the last index that you want. It's kind of confusing. So maybe I'll write some numbers down here. I'm just going to go for that part. Actually, I'll do the rest. This music's kind of annoying me, but that's fine. Anyway, name equals Roger. So our substring is going to go from index 0, that's right before the n, so it's inclusive, and then it's exclusive of this value. Equals is 4, so this is 4. It's going to stop right before that, so we're only going to get this part. We're going to get name. Okay? Another way to do it is if you want to, if you know the length of what you want, but you don't know the ending, say if I always want five characters, you just add five to your first thing. In this case, it would just be five, right? But if this substring was five, this one would be 10, and our result would be five characters long. Okay, you just add the length of your substring in the second one follow I'll do like if I want if I know that this will always be four characters I would just oops that's supposed to be a zero I would do this but I don't know it's always gonna be four characters it might not always be the name equals something we could have started with age so we know where our equal sign is it's right there so this this var name is going to be I hate when it does that. Is going to be name. And I could run it now. Actually, I will run it now. So we're going to print only the variable names. So we should see name, age, and SSN over here on the right. If I didn't miss anything. Name, age equals, SSN equals. Uh, I, oh, because this is always, you know. That's what we want. Now it should work. There we go. Name, age, SSN. I wasn't actually looping through. Alright. Now I said that there are two substrings. Two substring methods in Java. The first one takes two parameters. The second one only takes one parameter. And that parameter is the starting index. And it just takes the substring to the end of the original string. So I want equals plus one. So the equals is here. Index four. We don't want the equal sign. We want what's after it, so that's why the plus one is there. And then substring with one parameter just says go to the end. So we're just going to get Roger. So I'm going to print the uh, I'm going to print the value. I got to turn off that autocomplete. So we should get the three. So name Roger, age 32, and SSN one two three five six seven eight nine. Okay, so this is how you'd break up strings using. Uh, index of and substring. Okay, index of and substring are very, very common to use, and so is uh, split right here. This is very useful. All right. No questions so far. I don't even know how many. I started kind of early, and uh, usually people trickle in a little late. Oops, that's not supposed to be up there. Should have moved my browser. That's fine. There is one more method I want to talk about. We've talked a little bit about regular expressions. And we've talked a little bit about how to use them in this case with test split. You put a regular expression in here. If I wanted to split this by a equals or an and, I believe equals is not a special character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm just going to print every string 
that uh, that this regex splits. I believe we're going to get name, Roger, age. This is all going to be separate. Okay, it is. Good. So you can use a regex to do any kind of split that you want if, uh, if, you know, if this thing makes any kind of sense. If it's just random gibberish, you probably don't want to use regex, but rarely will you get random gibberish if you're programming something. Now there is one other very good way, well there's a bunch, but there's one I'm going to talk about. There's one very good way to use regex, and that's by using string.matches. So let's say somebody has input Somebody has input uh, something like this. Actually, let's just uh, let's just look at only this part. This SSN equals whatever. And let's say we want to detect when somebody has entered a nine-digit number with or without dashes in a social security number. So in America, we have a social security number which is three digits, two digits, four digits. Sometimes it's written like that, but sometimes Sometimes it's written like this, sometimes without the dashes, and sometimes maybe there's periods. There are lots of different ways to write it, but you want to match all of those. So you can use test.matches, and the string that you put in here is a regular expression for the match. Now I'm not going to talk too much about what I'm about to do, because it's a fairly complicated regular expression, especially if you don't know much about regular expressions. But I'm just going to briefly describe so what I'm looking for. Uh, we don't want the SSN, we just want the number part. What I'm going to be looking for in this regex, actually I'll put the rest of my code first. Uh, that's a valid SSN. Otherwise we're not going to do anything. So our match is going to be backslash D. This, uh, this curly bracket with two numbers means match the previous character between one and three times. So I'm matching one to three. Oh wait, what am I doing? No, I want actually, I want three. I don't know what I was thinking. I want three digits. And then let's say that we're allowing dashes and periods. Okay. So we want dash and period. Whoops. The, uh, the dot in regex is a special character. So you have to escape it with a backslash. And the reason I have two backslashes, I will explain in a minute. But actually, let's just let's just pretend that we only need one. This is this is going to be the actual regex. Question mark means the previous character is optional, so we're looking for an optional dash, or forgot the or, or an optional period. Then we're looking for two more digits, followed by an optional uh, dash or period optional, followed by four more digits. This is our regex, but you'll notice that Java gives me a problem because the backslash character in Java needs to be escaped. So even though this is a correct regex, and I'll just copy this and put it in uh, regexr, if I, yeah, there it is, I'll put it in here. So this is a legal regex, it's, you know, it's legit. It should be matching this though, this 555, that kind of concerns me. What did I do wrong? Optional that, and then two, and then optional. Oh, because this is, that's three digits. Okay, we're looking for three, two, four. And it should, uh, yeah, here is here it is just matching nine characters straight away. And this one's matching nine characters with dashes. If I take out this and this, it'll match that as well, because that has dashes instead of periods. So this is a real regular expression that does work. Uh, where's my, there it is. But in Java, you have to escape backslashes. So we're just going to put a second backslash everywhere that we have one so that Java doesn't throw up. And this is our regex in Java. It's going to be uh, percent. Uh, actually, I'll just paste it. That's our actual regex, and maybe I can line it up. Ah, forget it. This is usually what I do in Java, is I put the actual regex in a comment right above it, and then I put the escaped regex in Java right below it. So we're going to check this SSN, say is that valid? And it should be. That's a valid SSN. But if we type something bogus, like this is a letter, then we shouldn't get anything. And we don't. So this is a very powerful tool. Regular expressions are very powerful, and if you plan to go into computer science, you will use them. 
I promise. They didn't teach us this in class. You should learn it yourself. They're very useful and you will use them. You will. There's no way around it. Okay, I promise you, you will use regular expression if you get any kind of computer programming job. They're so good. And once you've learned the syntax, they're very easy to use. Like I just made this up in like 10 seconds, right? They're very easy to write once you know what the different characters mean. So those are the things I wanted to talk about. We've got index of, where you can look for where a particular character is. So if I knew there was a dash in here, I could look for an index of a dash. We looked at care at, which is basically the opposite of index of. Care at, we give it an index and it tells us what character is at that index in the array of characters that we call a string. The substring rips out a small section of a string, like if we only wanted the one, two, three, we just do substring from zero to three. From zero to three. I'll do that right now. And it's gonna be uh, test.substring, no, not subsequence substring from 0 to 3. What did I do? Is S lowercase and substring? It is. So we get 1, 2, 3. And then of course we have the matches which is very powerful. So that's all I want to talk about about string manipulation. Too many abouts in that sentence but that's fine. Um, caret index of substring, matches, and to care array sometimes. Actually, let me show you a little bit of code from the magic program. Hey, Ricky, what's going on? The usuals haven't trickled in yet, but this is going to be a short video anyway. I just wanted to show off for the archive. Where is my... I already forgot what I was looking for. I have a script parser. Here it is. I have a script parser and I have, this is for my magic rules engine, so all the things that the playing cards can do are scripted. You write them basically in a text file, and this class reads them. As you can see, the first thing that you'll do is you'll turn a string to a character array, and you'll just go through the character array. That's a rather short one. Here's, here's the better one, extract parameters, and the formatting is really bad on this. Fix that. Here's extract parameters, so if I have a function with parameters in it, this function tells me what the parameters are. So again, the first thing I'm doing is two character array. And then I'm going through the array, character by character, I'm not going to show you all the code, character by character, just parsing what this function does. In this, in this case, I'm parsing what parameters it has. So you will use these string manipulation tools a lot. Care at, not so much, but two character array you'll probably use every once in a while. Index of and substring together are extremely powerful. And then, of course, string dot matches you can use to match basically any pattern you can think of. And uh, that's it for string manipulation. I have no idea what the next video is going to be about, but I'll start it in just a little bit later tonight. Probably. Yeah, okay.